So, you know, we move in basically Jan 1, move out immediately after, move back into our house middle of February. Uh, in March of that year, uh, we were approached by uh, a VC out of Boston that said, hey, we, we want to invest in uh, the insure tech side of the business, which at the time was all one thing. In April, uh, or sorry, in May, we split the businesses completely. Uh, and at the very beginning of June, we took uh, uh, 10 million in, in financing into the technology side of it. And uh, our son was born. We, we were we literally signed the financing documents uh, in the hospital uh, when <laughs> when Jet was born. Uh, and uh, in August, uh, we were in marriage counseling. So you know, you, you, you want to kind of talk all about right. all those things that yeah. like lead up to wow, like this. Uh, um, yeah, 2021 was just a mess. Uh, you know, for, for us. Welcome to Heading West, a not-so-serious podcast where we talk about life, business, real estate, and our personal journeys as we head west. On today's episode, we interview Colin Navity, CEO of Breeze, an Omaha-based insured tech company backed by Link Ventures and Northwestern Mutual. Steve, I think people could pick up on this, but uh, you're somewhat related to Colin, right? Yeah, I, I had the great opportunity to meet Colin 35 years ago when he was born. <laughs> Day one. Yeah, so you know him pretty well. Uh, I, yeah, he came out crying. It was yeah, awesome. Yeah, I've known him for about a decade now, and, and I'm astounded that every, just about every conversation I have with him, whether it's about marriage, faith, business, parenting, I mean, you name it, I walk away with something really uh, valuable that I can implement into my life. And today was no different. I mean, if we're talking about personal health, how to balance life, um, being in, in, in the tech world, investing in real estate, I mean, you name it, we talked about it. So uh, I, I don't want to give away too much uh, to anybody who hasn't listened yet, uh, but I want to wet their whistle a little bit that I walked away. My biggest takeaway was, and I think it was yours too, is how Colin balances being uh, a co-founder and a, a CEO of being in real estate, just uh, buying and flipping a house, married, three kids. Uh, where's the time come from for this? Uh, but how he balances that is astounding. What, what was it about that that really stood out to you? Jake, I think it was amazing listening to Colin about how he balances work and life. Yeah. I just wish I would have known that when I was his age, I sure, <laughs> I sure could have used the advice because yeah, yeah. I didn't do it right. The young calf is teaching the old bull now, right? <laughs> so true. So yeah. true. All right. Well, let's get into it. I don't want to tease it up anymore. So stay tuned as we discuss how to balance life, work, and real estate, the benefits of multifamily investing, and the perils of a 72-hour fast with our guest, Colin Abadie. This episode is brought to you by Skyline Point Capital. If you're anything like me, you're always considering where to invest your money. Stocks, bonds, crypto, and rental home, the list is literally endless. As we've all seen over the past year, the stock market is unstable, the housing market is just weird, and inflation is on the rise. In times like these, the clear place to invest my money is in multifamily real estate, aka apartment complexes. Here's why. Returns on real estate investments have little to no correlation with the stock market. There's lower volatility, stable income streams, and the tax benefits are insane. And let's not forget that the apartments will typically appreciate in value over time, which means you can walk away with a pretty nice return when the complex is sold in three to five years. Best of all, multifamily investing is passive, so you get all of the benefits without the hassle and headache of your typical rental home investment. Getting started has never been easier. Head to skylinepointcapital.com to learn how you can start investing today. I'm a... Uh going through this, uh, like workout and fasting program. And, uh, so, um, it's like a 90 day thing. And I had my coaching call, uh, on Tuesday for like the, kind of the kickoff thing. And so I'm in the middle, I'm about right now, about 40 hours into a 72 hour fast. So are, you, you have no food, just liquid. Yeah, just liquid. I'm, uh, uh, having like a lot of electrolytes and stuff. Uh, yeah. but yeah, you, you start getting into like, 
you, you do a 72 and then like a, basically rolling 48s, but they kind of help you coach. So it's based off of like uh, one meal a day, but then you're looking at your calendar and you're like, okay, what, what are the days I can skip? Cause nothing's going on. And then, so you start kind of like getting into these longer fasts. Um, and then there's like, you know, workouts and stuff that go along with it, but it's led by a guy here in Omaha. Uh, his name's Joel Staley, but there's like 500 people in this program nationwide. Oh my like it's, it's kind of crazy. And I had, I had an insurance buddy that went through it and he was like, dude, like if you want to shed weight fast, like this is the best way to do it. So I started on Tuesday, okay, I started on Tuesday. Okay. You're going to, you gotta give it to me. Yeah, I will. I will. So, yeah. Give it to me after Italy. Okay. I'll probably gain about 10 there pounds you there. <clears throat> so you're, you're, th <laughs> you're three days into a three day, no food, uh, water only fast. Yep. Uh, well like, uh, electrolytes, yeah, yeah, sure. um, Salts, coffee, yeah. yeah, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, so I, there's like an app that goes along with it and it's, it's pretty cool. Cause, um, they really educate you on, I don't know if you can see that, but like, that's where yeah. my fast is. And so they educate you on like the 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 fire thing there at the beginning is like when ketosis starts and then the yeah. next one is uh like when heavy ketosis and then you start getting into like uh your your body starts breaking down your bad cells mm -hmm. um and so they like talk about misfolded proteins and like the types of stuff that would cause alzheimer's and so your body just starts kind of eating away at at the bad cells um and so it's it's really cool when you say like hey i'm going for a 72 hour fast they'll show you at what point in like different things kind of start to happen. And so it kind of motivates you. You're like, I want to get an extra 12 hours here so I can get into like the next stage of this. And yeah, so I'll, uh, what's, I'll, it, what's it cost you? Uh, it was 2,400. So yeah, not, oh. not cheap, but, uh, um, yeah, I've, uh, I've got like 50 pounds that have been sitting around for about seven years that I'm uh, just kind of sick of it. So yeah, well, it's, it's a, it's a, no, no booze. Uh, so the, the cool thing is when you eat, um, the, they, they tell you like, eat like a King. So, um, like Friday night, I'm going to like make a ribeye, you know, asparagus, like, you know, do, do, um, like a nice meal. You can, you can drink wine alongside of it, mm. but then like the second you eat, you know, it's like you're refeeding and then you roll right back into your fasting again. And so for the first three weeks, they want you to eat like you're in keto. So no sugars, no carbs. And then after three weeks, depending on how your body's kind of adjusted to it, then they'll say, Hey, like, let's start throwing a little bit of carbs in, but there's like coaching calls that you can jump into three times a week. There's like a Facebook community with it. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. Really? Yeah. Wow. What do you do when you go on vacations and stuff? I think you just, people. you just kind of stick to one meal a day and you know, it, they're, they're not saying, Hey, like take out the alcohol. They're just, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, kind of keep, keep that fasting routine going. Um, but it's, it's really cool. Cause you're meeting with somebody one-on-one -on -one that's also looking at your calendar and kind of helping you strategically yeah. think through, Hey, I, you've got this thing on Tuesday, do an OMAD and then jump into a 48 or a 72 after that. So it's like really kind of personalized to what's going on, but they work with a lot of business guys, CEOs, dads, like stuff like that's that. That's great. It's like, yeah. okay, that's one of the tough parts is like if you're on a fast or you're on a, a meal plan, it's if something screws with the rhythm, everything falls apart. Yeah. <clears throat> like you'll be like in a good thing. And then oh, I got this work dinner. Oh, let's get throw everything off. And then the next day, you're, you're, you're kind of out of your rhythm. So it's the, having that coach there, I bet is super helpful to say, okay, here's how we're going to handle that. You're going to do this, you can do that. And then we're going to get you back onto it after, uh, after you get so, done. So, so what is summer, the summer going for this? Are you, is she no, on this or no, she's, she's never really been like willing to kind of do this, this stuff with me. She, she feels like she has something that works for her. And if it's not broken, <laughs> don't think it. you know, like I can't. Sure. Yeah. So she, her, her only comment was don't get mad at me when I drink wine. I'm like, Hey, you do you. you know? <laughs> don't sit my and, wine. And what, what Lynette does, she goes, well, if you just eat healthy and if you ate what I, what I made, you wouldn't have to do this. Like, and so you, yeah. it's kind of like, you're ruining my, my <laughs> mojo for food because you can't control yourself. Yeah. So, <laughs> and Becca will say, uh, I don't know. Becca will say, if you didn't hoard, uh, breads and carbs, like you're a, a starving child, you'd probably be fitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the supportive wife. Yep. But somehow oh, Becca good. looks better than me. So she's apparently her thing works. Yep.
Same with have, summer. Have you found that the uh, like what was what was the experience like day one, day two, day three, especially like mental clarity, energy? How did it, like affect work? Did you find that like you know working in the in your in your tech companies that like uh, man, I can't even think like what are people talking about? I can't compute anything, or were you like on top of it? Um, so they, they, they say the first 24 hours is always kind of the hardest, um, yeah. you know, and so you're like, you're supposed to replace your meals with, uh, basically drinking electrolytes. So I've got like propels off here to the side that are like zero cal. Um, and I ordered some like electrolyte powder off of Amazon. So that first 24 hours, I've got a little bit of a cold, you know, too, right now. Cause the kids were sick. Um, but they're saying like, once you start getting in 24 hours past, like your mental clarity is a, a lot better. Your decision making is a lot better. Um, and, uh, like there's, there's different stages of it where your energy goes through the roof. And they said, once you start getting close to 72 hours of fasting, your, your, uh, HGH levels are five times what they normally are. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yep. So like your, your testosterone and energy, all those things are just like through the roof. Once you kind of get past 48 hours, getting closer to that 72. So. Well, you're smarter yeah. than me. When I, when I did a, I do a 72 hour fast, probably once or twice a year. <clears throat> My first one, uh, I just, you know, I'm like a, I'm a Neanderthal in some ways where if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it like the right way, you know, not doing anything wrong. I'm going to like go completely dogmatic about it. And I, uh, I did just water and I'm like, I'm not doing coffee. I'm not doing electrolytes, nothing. And I get to like hour 60 and I about passed out. And my wife, who's, you know, uber smart, significantly smarter than me goes, uh, like, are you, are you taking like, are you like replenishing? Cause you're, you're drinking like a gallon or more a day of water to try to like get rid of those, those hunger, hunger pains. She's like, are you putting, are you like drinking any salts? Are you doing electrolytes? Like you're, fl you're like flushing out all the essential minerals from your body. And I'm like, no, and she goes, and I'll probably, I won't say what she said to me, but I was a knucklehead and like instantly I, I took it an hour later, I was better. And I ended up having to quit at like 60 hours and was super pissed that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get the full 72. Since then I do, I, you know, do salt and electrolytes twice a day. Uh, but crash yeah. and burn test run. I don't know how you do it on just water. Uh, a lot of, uh, grace from the Lord, a lot of patience from my wife and, uh, just work. <laughs> so I could focus and on something. In the fetal position. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I also, did they, did they go ahead? Yeah. Uh, Colin, did they tell you, uh, at what point you have to have your last meal or like before six o'clock? So, uh, you can eat there's, anytime. there's not a timing, like they want it to be dinner based. Um, but like they do weigh-ins every Sunday, there's this massive spreadsheet of like everybody in the program. So it has everybody's name, the week, mm -hmm. their weights. So it's like super transparent, like a ton of accountability, I got a guy that texts me every two days uh, that I talk to, and uh, like, so it's it's a it's pretty cool. And like, you, like got, you got a lot of guys that are yeah, uh, uh, you know, pretty active in the Facebook group, and um, but yeah, it's uh, you know indexed towards they want you to eat at night, and um, uh, yeah, like I said, kind of uh, ketosis or you know keto themed uh, the first few weeks, and then slowly adding in carbs. So in a month's time frame. How much weight do they say you can take off? There's, I mean, it depends on where you start, but there's guys that have lost 60 pounds in 90 days. Whoa. Like it's, it's, it's nuts. Really? Yeah. Yep. How's yep. this? It's, uh, okay. Joel, Joel Staley fitness.com. Shout out to Joel Staley. Yep. <laughs> I'm going <gonna>, to <laughs> contact him afterwards and get uh, some sponsorship. Promo here. code Colin yeah, Abbott. <laughs> How does that fit in your, Jokes. in your daily routine? Like, do you, uh, you know, I know summer cooks a fair amount. I know you mm -hmm. cook a little bit. Uh, do you find that one, do you find that, uh, it throws a wrench in, in the rest of your family's ritual? And also like, how do you, how are you fitting this in real estate? You're flipping your house, not flipping your house, but you're remodeling your house. How, why, and how are you trying to fit this in? I, th I think it's easy, you know, like when, when, you know, I'm, I'm 34, uh, we got three little kids, uh, house projects going on, uh, uh, businesses, real estate, all 
you know, that, that kind of stuff. And you kind of get to the point where like, I only have so many hours in the day. I'm not going to make it to the gym, you know, five days a week, as much as I would love to, uh, exhausted. I gotta, I, I like you're choosing in between, am I going to wake up at five o'clock or am I going to the gym afterwards? And it's eating into family time. It's eating into something at the end of the day. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I think I'm looking at this as, Hey, it's, it's an easier way, uh, you know, to kind of get to where I want to get a little bit quicker. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, and one of the things they said too, is they, they kind of coach you on, um, when you're there at dinner with your family, like, even though if, if, if you're not eating, if, if, if you're into a longer fast, uh, you know, use that opportunity that you would normally be putting food in your mouth to be asking questions, right. And like being more present there than you normally would be because you're eating, uh, you know, so trying to kind of put yourself in that yeah. mindset, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I love breakfast food, but I don't always eat breakfast. You know, when I get to the office, uh, it's really easy to skip lunch. You know, I, that's something historically I've always been, been pretty bad at. Uh, so it, it's not like a huge transition. That's, that's, that makes a lot of sense. That's, it's a natural fit into your routine already. Mm-hmm. How do you find, so are they, are they, are they encouraging you to, uh, not eat lunch? Uh, so it's, it's all based off of OMAD, like one meal a day and okay. Yep. And so that meal is typically dinner. And then, uh, you know, some people right out of the gate have no issue doing it. Some are, you know, trying to figure out fasting for the first time. Um, they want your first fast to typically be 48 hours. And, and I think the reason being, uh, just the, the mental, uh, uh, component of, Hey, if I can do 48 hours, 24 is no problem. And if I can do 48 hours, 72 is not that much further. <laughs> They've never done it before. Um, yep, yep. <laughs> Anybody who says uh, 48 to 72 is a breeze is – Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. It's, Something's wrong with actually, them. Actually, day three is pretty easy. <laughs> day one sucks. I'll, I'll let you know how day three is. Day three <laughs> – at least day, from my experience, day three is I've never had better energy. I've never been more mentally clear. Uh I've never gone to four days, so I have no idea. I've heard it. Um, I've heard it's pretty good. Four and five days. Five days is when your body starts eating the bad cells in your in your body. I mean, I think it happens day three on, but day five is man where your your body's getting it's eating its bad stuff. It's flushing it out. And I'm no doctor, so don't take my word for that. But that's what I've I've heard. Um, I read it on Google. Yeah, <laughs> the most trustworthy source. Um, do you? Ha- so how do you balance, how do you balance those things? We, we sort of talked about it, like you're remodeling your house. I've been to your house. It's not small. Uh, you're married, three kids. How do you, f- how do you keep things balanced? You know, you're a husband first, you're a dad second, and you're a CEO third, and you're a real estate investor fourth. How do you keep them in that order? And how do you keep them in balanced in proportion? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that they're always like totally zen. You know, if that makes sense, yeah, I don't, yeah. you know, like just, just this stage of life, I think it's, you know, next to impossible to, you know, I, I would be disingenuous to say that we have it all figured out, but sure. you know, I think the timing of everything that's kind of gone on in our lives over the last, you know, year and a half, two years was like, you know, somewhat, somewhat divine. You talk about, you know, the, the house and the, and the kind of fixer upper project. So we, we weren't planning on moving. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's an area of the city that we've, that we live in and, and love and specifically, uh, this block that we've been walking around for five years and, uh, and a house came up and, and we, again, we weren't planning on moving and threw an offer out and it was accepted. And all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're packing our stuff up and, you know, moving about seven blocks from, from where our house was. And so we spent the beginning of, uh, 2021 really gutting this thing. And it was kind of funny as we, as, as we walk around this loop, we'd always kind of joke that, uh, you know, this is the one house that doesn't fit. This is the one house that looks like it's, you know, falling over and doesn't belong on the block. And here we are, you know, <laughs> later, uh, the ones that, that are responsible for kind of cleaning up this eyesore. And, uh, so, so that was kind of the beginning of 2021 for us was stepping into this massive house project, uh, summer's pregnant with, um, our, our third kid. So, uh, jet, our, our son was born, uh, May of 2021. We had two little toddlers at the time. Uh, Jack was three and Amina was one. And we've, we've got this house that doesn't have, you know, railings on the stairs. There's holes in the floor going down <laughs> in the basement. Like you, you want, you want to talk about anxiety, oh my um, gosh. you know, and, and those types of things, uh, you know, my, and, 
uh, I think some are struggled with it, you know, quite a bit too. Cause it's like, you can't, we, we don't live in a place where you can take your eye off the kids. You don't feel safe in this. And so, uh, we, we actually moved out for about six weeks and, uh, kind of floated in between, uh, my parents' place and her parents' place. We had, uh, I had a mattress on the floor here, uh, in, in a house that had no ceilings or floors. And, uh, I would sleep here and wake up just so I could open the door for the contractors, uh, as that was going Wow. On. Uh, so that would, that was really how 2021, you know, started off. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad we had that opportunity because we love our house. We love our neighbors. Uh, we've really gotten to, uh, kind of turn it into ours. Um, but then, you know, you, you start kind of talking through the businesses. Um, it was, I think April of that year. So, so, you know, we move in basically Jan one, move out immediately after move back into our house, middle of February. Uh, in March of that year, uh, we were approached by uh, a VC out of Boston that said, hey, we, we want to invest in uh, the insure tech side of the business, which at the time was all one thing. Um, and, and we had always felt like that was going to be something that was eventually going to happen. Um, and so I think we were prepared for that discussion. But then in, in April, uh, or sorry, in May, we split the businesses completely. Uh, and at the very beginning of June, we took, uh, uh, 10 million in, in financing into the technology side of it. And, uh, our son was born. We, we were, we literally signed the financing documents, uh, in the hospital, uh, when, <laughs> when Jet was born, uh, and, uh, in August, uh, we were in marriage counseling. So, you know, you, you, you want to kind of talk all right. about all those things that yeah. like lead up to, wow, like this, uh. Um, yeah, 2021 was just a mess, uh, you know, for, for us, but so, so all that to say, um, you know, I think we, we, we really take it day by day in terms of, um, you know, trying to make sure that there's that balance, but I, I can tell you, it's not something that, mm-hmm. that I, I'm great at. And I think that, you know, you, you kind of need to be in the mindset or the posture that, um, I've, I've got to decide every day what my priorities are because yeah. it's very easy uh, to get those misaligned really quickly. Yeah. If you, if you're comfortable sharing, how did, uh, you know, you've talked about, you've got all these things going on, culminates into taking the investment money, jet being born, and then boom, you're in marriage counseling. How did that process go? The marriage counseling, how did that process go? How are you guys doing today? What's that, what's that look like? 2022 versus 2021. Yeah. Um, it was, it was tough. Summer started going before I did. Um, and one, one of the, the major, uh, like fights at the time. And, and like, I, I remember being really upset about it in the moment, but I, I feel like an idiot, you know, talking about it now, but, um, you know, we, we had, there was so much going on, but we had, uh, two cars, uh, both of which neither of those could fit three kids. And, and so jets born were, were in this house um, I didn't prioritize, you know, getting, getting a car that she could get the kids around. And so three weeks into being home inside of this house, it's getting fixed up. Like she can't leave. And, oh, and, um, you know, I think she took it upon herself to, you know, start looking for a van. And I was not helpful in that. You know, this is right after we took the financing. My whole mindset is like, I got to figure out how to grow this. We've got to add people to the team. Mm-hmm. You know, this is my priority here while my wife's sitting at home without a car. You know, something practical. Can, yeah. She can, oh yeah. Yeah. And, um, so, you know, there was a period there where, um, one, I don't think I, I, I shouldn't say I don't think like I didn't meet the needs that, that our family needed, but, um, you know, two, we were just kind of, we always talk about like my top 10, uh, and like priorities hardly ever align with what mm. her top 10 are. And, and so that's like a constant discussion that, that is, uh, is being had, you know, like minor business, like real estate, like what's going on with the team and all these things. And hers are like, we need to get the trim painted and, uh, (laughs) Jack starting preschool and, you know, getting (laughs) soccer going and and like, it it doesn't align, um, you know, but you gotta, I think prioritize those conversations to kind of come back and, and, um, you know, figure out how do you kind of tackle the things that need to be tackled together? Cause it's very easy um, you know, to say, Hey, this is, this is what I'm focused on and this is what you're focused on. And then you end up just becoming strangers in your own house. Right? Yeah. Become roommates, not partners, yep. not, not uh, a couple. It's like, I just sit side by side, shoulder to shoulder with this person and we'll talk about things as they come up. But 
that's, you can understand her. Uh, I mean, I know you understand it now, but you can understand her position of she's locked in her, not locked in her house, but she's in her house. This is her world, her kids, school, soccer. I need a van. I need to actually leave the house. Give me something. I mean, you can, you can appreciate her perspective now. Did, did you find that uh, going through marriage counseling actually propelled you guys into uh, a better place than you've ever been? Or how's it exiting marriage counseling? How's that been? Um, I think, I think it was a little tough. Like I think, uh, you know, if, if anything, when, when you wind up there and you realize, oh man, like we're not in a good spot and, and how, like, how did we kind of get here? Um, I, I'm sure you feel the same way. Like I married a saint, man. Oh. I, I, if there's one thing I've done in my life, well, it's like married incredibly well. Yes. Um, yeah. And you married up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, and and, and so I think when you, when you're there, it was less about, um, you know, like tools or resources from, mm-hmm. from the counselor themselves and more about like, we're here, we're in this, what happened. Yeah. Um, and so I think, uh, that was like a little bit of a reset. And so, uh, you know, the fall of 2021, um, you know, I think we, a- after, you know, jet, you know, you're going through the whole process too, of like, you've got two little kids and a newborn that, um, you know, nobody's sleeping well. Uh, you know, you're trying to figure out how you integrating this new baby into the family when you feel like you already have two others. Um, but by the fall, you know, it felt like, Hey, we've, we've kind of started to figure out a routine. And, um, so I think that gave us the opportunity to kind of come back to the table and say like, Hey, we're, we're going to fight for this. And, and this is worth fighting for. And, um, and uh, one of the things I think it was my mother-in-law uh, always uh, or told told uh, Summer is like the best thing that you can give your kids is a healthy marriage. Mm. Um, and so I think, you know, I've, I've, I've heard that said all the time. Um, and so I think that just gave us, um, got, got to a point of like having grace and understanding for like everything that had gone on. I don't know a lot of people that have, you know, kind of had all of those major things hit in the course of like six months. Yeah. Um, And, and so I think, you know, it, it got to the point of like being comical, you know, like you're, 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 um, having the attitude of like, Hey, if we can, if we can get through this at this point, like there's probably not a lot of other big things that, that we can't tackle together. So I'd love to, I'd love to shift, um, the direction a little bit and go back to, to your, your home. Uh, you know, you talked about, you talked about how you use that as a, obviously as a place to, raise your family. But I, I imagine at some point you have a business mind. I mean, you're, I, if I know you well enough, you're constantly thinking about, uh, numbers and how do these things fit the financials? I mean, uh, this is an investment as well as it is a, a place to raise your, your growing family. Um, did you, did you have that in mind that this was going to be your first foray into real estate? Was it your first entry into real estate, buying a fixture upper, uh, and, and, you know, building equity in it, or did you jump in somewhere else? Commercial, you know, real t- retail, where did you start with that? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So our, our first kind of dipping our toe into real estate was actually back in 2018. Mm-hmm. So, um, we, we've kind of always been around it. Summers, uh, uh, my father-in-law, um, he, he has a real estate company. They do everything from multifamily, uh, uh, commercial retail development projects, uh, kind of all, all over the country. And so he's always been a huge proponent with the kids of, Hey, let's, uh, um, you know, start, start looking at this. Um, you know, even, even if you're not doing this full time, um, you know, to kind of have uh, real estate on the side, that's throwing off passive income that you can kind of continue to build on. Let's do it. And so back in uh, 2018, we actually uh, went through the process of, of purchasing a 24 unit apartment complex and, in uh, Fremont, Nebraska. And so that was really my first uh, experience going through, Hey, how do we underwrite? How do we do all the due diligence? Um, I've got a background in that kind of stuff. So I felt comfortable doing it, but um, uh, you know, how do we make sure that this is going to, uh, you know, one, we're buying at the right price, but two, we really have a solid plan for uh, what we want to do with this property, how long we want to hold it. And so we, um, uh, yeah, kind of dipped our toe into that in 2018 and then actually just exited that, uh, about two months ago. Wow. I, I'd love to hear from you in a minute, like how that turn out. Was it, mm-hmm. I can imagine, uh, doing an apartment complex for the first time. If I did it, I'd probably 
could probably crash and burn. But I'd love to hear how it panned out. But Steve, do you, I mean, you've got, you've been investing in real estate for, for a long time. Mm-hmm. Have you found that it's common for someone's first you know, dipping their toe into the water that they're jumping in at the uh, multifamily arena or are they usually going residential? Like what's your, what's your experience with people's first step into real estate? Usually what they do is they'll buy a single family rental home and uh, then become the landlord, the maintenance man, the, the person that gets the calls at midnight or two o'clock in the morning and, and some of if they've if they've got it figured out, they will may buy a couple more single families. But after a while, they find out that you know it's not probably the easiest and best way. And then they'll switch over to multi-family and at a much larger scale, either a fourplex or an eightplex. But uh, that's for all the work and effort. Going to multi-family is the best way to go, rather than going to single-family homes. That's interesting because, you know, I've, uh, I've always assumed and it's been shown that I was wrong. Uh, but I've always assumed starting with a a single family home is the easiest way to get in because it's, it's one house. Like if there's, if something goes wrong, it's just a small, it's, it's going to have a small impact. Uh, I'd have been terrified Colin to, to go and buy, what'd you say? 24 unit apartment because the, the magnitude of what could go wrong uh, is it's much larger, but it sounds like what you're saying, Steve is, uh, there, you know, the thing you should be worrying about is, are you going to have to be active in this rather than passive? Because I imagine Colin, you were passive through this whole thing. You probably hired somebody to run it for you. Um, is that, is that fairly accurate? Yeah. So I think, I think sing, single family is easier to get into if you're starting from scratch, cause mm-hmm. it requires less capital, right? Like it's no different than, uh, you know, going through and buying a house that you're going to live in aside from, you know, the amount of equity that you have to put down um, with multifamily, you do reach economies of scale. Um, you know, we, we bought it at a price where we had factored in. Um, I didn't want to be the guy that was driving to Fremont, uh, you know, to, to fix a dishwasher. And um, so we had, uh, you know, kind of pro forma it in, Hey, we're going to have a management company uh, run this, which was, which was great. Um, but I think it really comes down to, um, one, when you're first starting out, I think a lot of people do, you know, they go through house hacking or um, are buying, you know, one or two individual properties, whether it's single family or duplex. Uh, but you really start to reach economies of scales and or economies of scale and get to the point where you're like, man, I don't want to manage five or six or seven individual homes. It's mm. so much easier to roll that into something bigger um, at, at that point. How did this, uh, you said you just sold it. How'd that if you, you don't have to share details, but how'd it go for, for you guys? Yeah, I think, um, um, it was a great transaction for us, um, for, for a couple of reasons. Um, we, you know, going through, we were able to raise the rents every single year. Um, but really what it came down to was we found the right buyer, uh, mm-hmm. that the way that they underwrote it was they're, they're local. Um, they, the way that they were looking at it was, Hey, we don't need the management company. And so when they, when they kind of spread sheeted it out, um, they were able to, pay a much higher purchase price than somebody that would be um, using a management company. So it was really the right buyer, but it ended up being a fantastic transaction. Um, and we'll be able to do um, some other projects with, with that capital that we pulled out. Nice. Is, do you want to keep it in multifamily or are you thinking spread it out? Um, I like multifamily just cause, um, you're really diversifying the risk over a lot of different units, mm-hmm. right? Like when you, when you look at one, we're in a period of really high inflation, um, and we're in a period of, of interest rates are going through the roof. And so that is pushing a lot of people that would be, uh, normal first time home buyers, uh, back into the rental markets. Um, and, and I think it was just yesterday or the day before, um, you know, the housing market just demand right now is down so much because interest rates are up. Um, and so I, I love multifamily from the perspective of, um, instead of having the risk of, um, you know, one, two, three, or a whole bunch of like individual homes, you can really think of multifamily as, uh, if, if you have 24 units or you have 240 units, right. You're diversifying and spreading the risk of that vacancy over, um, a much bigger, uh, uh, amount mm-hmm. of, of units. Um, and when you look at occupancy rates across the country right now, whether it's Omaha, Nashville, or, you know, somewhere else, there's just a lack of housing. 
Um, and so I think that's going to continue to be a strong market here over the next several years. That makes sense. That's great. Colin, we're, we're uh, coming up on uh, the end of our, our time, but we, with guests on the show, we like to end with a speed round of questions, seven questions just to give a, uh, and you've, uh, you, you haven't read them or seen them yet. So uh, I'm going to spit oh, them out at you, but this will help us uh, listeners get to know you a little bit better. So should I roll through them? What's one piece of real estate advice you'd give to others? Uh, start early. I, I wish this was something I was doing in my early twenties. Mm. Uh, you know, the, the more I, uh, the more I learn, the more I'm kicking myself for, I, sh I should have been doing this a long time ago. Amen to that. All right. Do you have any daily rituals that you swear by? I think uh, just the morning coffee. Sum Summer and I really enjoy mm. a French press. Uh, we do it every single morning. One of the things when we fix the house up uh, that we put in was a hot water faucet, um, you know, right, right next to the sink there. So that, you know, at our old house, we would have to, uh, you know, put water into the teapot, you know, wait 10 minutes for it to boil and, uh, you know, then pour it in the French press. Yeah. But that was like one of the things when we were going through the kitchen, <laughs> we're like, we are not finishing this kitchen without a hot water spout. So we, we really enjoy a French press. Yeah, morning. that's great. And I bet it's a great ritual for you and your wife to connect early in the morning, get on the same page and, and then, cause you guys are going opposite directions after that, you know, you're going to, to business and she's going to family. So I bet that's a great touch point every morning. It, uh, it, it ebbs and flows, uh, because I, I think most, most mornings when our feet are hitting the floor, <laughs> the kids are already up and the circus is already. Started, yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's one item you could not live without? Oh man. Uh, item or item. Uh, so I've, family is already included. You don't have to, you don't have okay. to say your wife or anything. Um, I think my laptop and, and that, and that's probably a bad thing, you know, <laughs> but like as, as an entrepreneur, like, you know, whether we're going to my in-laws or traveling, like you'll, it, it's always in my backpack. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm learning how to, uh, disconnect or at least trying to get better at that. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of the hub, you know, for, for yeah. everything that I feel like I do. Summer's going to hear this and be like, you should have said your wedding ring. Lose-lose <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> question. I'll, I'll scrub that one from the list. All right. Um, what's one thing in life, business, or real estate that you're really excited about? Oh man, we're, um, uh, a, a couple of things. One, you know, I, my, my main gig, um, you know, is, is running breeze. It, it's, it's an insure tech that's, uh, helping, uh, American workers in the event that, you know, they can't work, um, uh, due to a sickness or injury. Uh, uh, we will step in and help, uh, replace their paycheck. Mm. And we, we just launched a new product actually about a month and a half ago. Uh, there's a short-term disability product that pays, uh, benefits for childbirth. It also pays, uh, benefits for, uh, family medical leave. Um, so if you work for an employer that, uh, you, um, you know, have, have a child or adopt a kid, uh, or have to step out of work for uh, the care of a child spouse or parent, um, we'll pick up and, and, uh, pay a portion of your paycheck. Mm. And so it's a really, really cool product. So I'm super excited, um, about getting that out and continuing to distribute it. That's awesome. What's one business you wish you could go back and start or invest in? Man, I, I mean, I, I feel like everybody would say Google or Apple, yeah. you know, right? Yeah. Like or Berkshire, <laughs> or, or Berkshire. Yeah. yeah, I mean, iconic companies that, uh, um, yeah, you know, just so transformative. I, I remember sitting around our kitchen table when uh, 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 at my parents' place when the iPhone first came out, and we were talking about. I remember my dad asking, he was like, "Would you ever use something uh, that allowed you to play music on your phone?" And, you know, at that point you have your CD players and your yeah. MP3 players. <laughs> Walk like, no, why would, why would anybody ever want to do that? Yeah. And, and, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, just a, a really cool, uh, you know, leading and kind of anticipating, you know, where mm. the market's going. And, and, um, you know, I think that, you know, the whole entire world can say that they're, they're, um, you know, one, uh, I think more connected, um, you know, but two, they're just beautiful products. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was one uh, item along with crypto that I poo-pooed the idea pretty early and it was, it was super wrong. <laughs> All right, uh, two more. In what situations do you find you're most happy or fulfilled? 
I think being with, with our kids, um, you know, it, it's a really fun stage of life. Uh, we, one of the things we did that was actually uh, my, my dad's recommendation when, when we did the house renovation and, and pulled the ceilings down, uh, he was saying, Hey, like you got the ceilings down, put speakers up. And, mm. and, I'm, and again, I'm like, no, nah, man, I'm not, I'm not paying to put speakers in the ceilings. <laughs> and we ended up doing it. And, and I'll tell you being able to just throw music up in the house and like watch the kids dance and have fun oh, yeah. is like one of the most joyful things that yeah. I, I enjoy. And, uh, we're, we're beating, uh, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of, uh, George Ezra. He, mm. he, uh, Istan, uh, he had that song Istanbul. Oh, he's yeah. got yeah. a new one out called green, green grass. And we've been beating that to death at the house right now, just cause it, you know, it, like the kids just kind of get this little bump going yeah. and it's really cute. <laughs> I'll have to do that. Uh, hey, Col- kids. Colin, you, you were, you were talking about pulling down the, the drywall and finding things when you, when you bought this house, it, it was built for lots of kids. When you yeah. walk through the house or above the garage and you were looking around, did you find anything that that was like, oh, man, we did. this old house? Um, we, so we found a couple guns and knives up in the uh, in the, the attic above the garage. And, Whoa. Uh, yeah. So we we brought those down and, and uh, they're, they're pretty cool. They're like sitting in a box uh, uh, somewhere here in the house. But... Um, yeah, the, the house we bought was built by an orthopedic surgeon back in, I think 72 or 74 and he had 13 kids. Whoa. Um, and so this, uh, yeah, really, really cool, you know, really cool house just needed to, you know, some love and rehab. Um, but yeah, there was uh, a lot of, you know, just, I think over the course of 50 years, you know, things as we're pulling ceilings down and, uh, you know, things that got stuck in the ducks and, you know, you're, uh, <laughs> Yeah, finding finding old old toys and you know things in the house. So it, was, it was kind of a fun process. Thirteen kids is that foreshadowing for you in summer? No, no, <laughs> I didn't. not even close. Yeah, we're, 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 we'll we'll be uh, uh, a great customer for uh, marriage counseling at that point. <laughs> <laughs> you got enough room, just move them in. Yep. All right, last one. As you head west, where do you hope to end up? That's a great question. I think, um, I think there's probably a lot of ways you can, you know, interpret that question at the end of the day. I think everybody's, you know, you're always trying as, as a dad, you know, striving to be a good dad, a good husband, you know, first and foremost. But, um, you know, when it comes to business, when it comes to real estate, I, I love entrepreneurship. I love, um, um, you know, where, where I'm at right now and the, and the ways that I, I spend my time and the people that I work with. So I think, um, you know, first and foremost, uh, you know, making sure that, that the West that I'm, I'm traveling to is, is one where, um, you know, my wife loves me, my kids love me. Um, and, and that's always, uh, you know, first priority, but two, I think just indexing towards, um, you know, spending, spending time on things that, that are fulfilling. Um, I think one, one of the things I learned really early on from investment banking days was uh, money, money doesn't make you happy. Mm. And I'm, I feel like super fortunate to have learned uh, that at a relatively young age. Cause I think that's something that people get stuck in, um, and can really, really wreck you. Um, so I think, you know, um, outside of family, it's, it's working on things that are, that are fulfilling. That's super good. That is really good. Well, Colin, appreciate you jumping on today, chatting with us, sharing your story. Um, is there any place that, uh, listeners can find you can find breeze? What, should, what do you want to leave them with? Yeah. So, um, I'm probably most active on LinkedIn. Uh, so you can find me on LinkedIn and, and Facebook. I'm not a big, uh, uh, a Twitter guy or an, anything like that, but, uh, yeah, you can find me out on LinkedIn. Awesome. Thanks Colin. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks guys. Thanks guys.